Welcome back to another From the Stash podcast, and I'm your host, James Davis McAllister, and um, I want to thank McAlpine Meadery for sponsoring this episode. And today I have a very special guest. This is actually um, first uh, episode of season two, I guess you would call it. I took a six-month break, uh, the tour, blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares. Um, Monica, is it Strut? Sure is. How do you say your last name? Uh, Strut. <laughs> Strut. Okay, okay, okay. I just want to make sure. You never know. Monica Strutt, Um from the band Glass Martyr um, out of Melbourne, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah. But you have to pronounce it like an Australian and call it Melbourne. Melbourne. Is, is not at all how it's spelled, but, you know, you've got to put the no, Aussie accent. Melbourne. I live in Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Um, so... It was kind of, um, I'll, I'll tell the story of how I even found out about you. You're in my suggested friends and, and uh, your picture is you with, uh, you know, a microphone in a show. And um, it was just so happened that the guest I was supposed to have had flaked on me. And it, it was really weird because it was right around that time. And, and I, I, was, I was, it said one mutual friend. And I'm like, one mutual friend, huh? They must be like from far away or in a bigger band. So I click and. I was like, I did some research and st- some studying. And I'm like, oh, and she, uh, and she runs her own uh, music uh, marketing business or, or music marketing. She's a business coach as well. That she would be a very interesting guest. So I, I was like, well, here you go. She might think I'm a freak. I'm gonna add her. And then I immediately message you, like, I, I think within like 10 minutes of you accepting my friend request. And um, I mean, I kind of got straight to the point, <laughs> you know. And uh, that's how we're here today. And forgive me if. Uh, I sound nervous or seem nervous. Um, I kind of am. I won't lie. Normally I'm not, but it's been a long time and uh, it's, it's, it, it's been a super stressful time, but uh, welcome to the show. I appreciate you uh, taking the time getting up early in the morning, you know, <laughs> 35 there. It's my pleasure. That's so crazy. And it's so interesting to hear that. I love, love, love hearing how people like find out about me. And I love that you, found me through your personal Facebook because I think like personal Facebook pages for bands and anyone who wants to build like a profile online are the most underutilized resource ever. So it's really, really it's cool that you found me. Yeah. It's funny because I, um, I have, a, you know, I have a, um, a company page, Hard Haven Entertainment, and I, I forget to use it because my main, my, my personal page is what gets, um, the engagement and interaction, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. But the artists I manage, you know, it's a little bit different, you know, because there's there's time put into it and, and money and, and that's how it has to go. But for me personally, like people are always like, how do I get a hold of you? How do I get a hold of you? You know, and I'm like, Facebook, 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 you know, and um, I, I I'm really uh, I'm really glad that, you know, fa- like just social media in general, um, especially Facebook, because it makes it so easily accessible. Like if you listen to my last season, I have I have. um Andy Bain from Danger Kids, uh, Andy Atkins from The Plea for Purging, Cody Manson. And these people I wouldn't have got hadn't it, you know, just randomly messaged. Yeah, Um, yeah. Because I think the thing is as well, like, even before I heard your podcast, which I've listened to now, uh, but, you know, when you messaged me, the first thing that you do when you get, you know, someone reaching out like that is you go stalk their Facebook page because, we we live in a time where you really can't hide who you are online anymore. And it's like, if you're someone who doesn't have their own photo as your profile picture or and if I you're didn't. someone, <laughs> yeah, you did, but you it, had like your places of work and, you know, in yeah. your about section, like I could check that out and see, I have my own um, number you know, there, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> I didn't see Ooh. that probably because I'm, you know, a millennial and afraid of phone calls, but it's yeah. Like, I'm here. It's like, that's the thing, you know, you got to stalk people's Facebook page and make sure they're legit. And it's like, it's so easy to, it, it's not easy to hide anymore. No. And, and I, I learned something from a mentor of mine and um, he, his, his email was like his full name. And he, I was like, why do you do that? You know? And he's like, because I want people to know who I am. I don't want to hide anything. I want to immediately, when I make an interaction, email somebody, they know my full name. And so that's why James Davis McAllister, that's why I go by it. It rolls off the tongue anyways, but I've always, ever since then, I've just gone by that. And it's funny because my picture was a picture of shout out to flames. The video comes out tomorrow, flames of God, 
uh, his video for so close. It's just a picture of uh, the um, thumbnail for that. And I didn't even think about that. You know, that's a really good point. I, I probably shouldn't message people when I don't have my, uh, you know, but you can go and look and I have thousands of pictures of myself, you know, <laughs> literally. Yeah. I like, yeah, I went through your profile pics <laughs> just to make sure you were a real like, person. You can see my hair like, grow. You see my yeah. hair grow. I was like, goes. oh yeah, that explains the mustache. So I shouldn't ask this um, because you're a woman, but that, there comes a train. Uh, but how old are you? I'm 32. You're one year younger than me. No, yeah. I would have never said that in a million years. I would have said like 25, maybe 26. Oh, that's awesome. That's good. I mean, I shouldn't even say that's good because I don't know. It's it age is such a weird thing. There was definitely, and I'm still struggling with it now. Like, there's definitely as a woman, like, uh, this you know how the entertainment industry glorifies youth and everything. Yeah. And one of my biggest fears when I was like a teenager or when I was in my early twenties is that I would still be like quote unquote trying to make it in my early thirties. And um, here I am, like, and my band here is I am. <laughs> yeah, my band <laughs> is like big. Yeah, my band is like bigger than it's like, this is the most successful project I've been in. Plus, I work full time in the music industry. And I'm so glad that I didn't give up at 25 when I thought I would. So I want to be like fully, even though it's like scary to tell people my age still, because I know that there is ageism, I still want to be like, as transparent about it as possible, just for like other people who maybe have those fears. I don't know. Did you like, not to be the interviewer, yeah. but like, I'm curious. Did you know? Like, why did you ask? Yes. That? Absolutely. I, um, long story short, um, I mean, I, I, I dropped out of high school to, to tour with the band and it, it, it didn't end. It didn't end there. I just kept going and going and going. And, um, I, I write about the age of, oh, I don't even know the age of probably about seven years ago. So see, I'm 33, I'll be 34 September 10th. So like, I don't know, I was like 26 ish, 27 ish. I, um, I kind of hung it up proverbially and I started booking shows more because the same thing you're thinking, even though 27 is about prime for a musician, I'm mm -hmm. thinking in my head because I know, I mean, I've been in the industry and, I, and I've had, you know, labels approach me before, you know, and they want to know how old you are, how many kids you got, et cetera, et cetera. And it's even worse for a girl. Um, so you have a point there. In fact, I met one today that she's 30 and, and she's, she's beautiful. And she, she had, she became a musician because she couldn't be a model anymore because she turned 30. And, oh, um, wow. so I think it's good that you talk, I think more women should talk about it like that because the, it's the stigma and, and forgive me, I don't know if you know the terminology of boomer, it's the boomer thought process that, oh, well, once you reach this age, then your beauty is, you know, gone or whatever. And, it, and it's, and, uh, it, there's always been the younger, the younger, especially in females, it's always been the, you know, younger, um, younger beauty and stuff and, and, and it almost, uh, sickening way but for me long yeah. story short for for me yes I, I i got around 30 um well about around 27 ish and, and i was like yeah uh this yeah you know what i mean like i had been there done the i was in a band oceans of actually we were doing really really well um it was the best band i had had uh and it just it just fell apart and right now is the most successful i've ever been in the music scene like this podcast i made because covid hit and i was booking yeah. full time and it, and it kind of just took off and I was like, what the hell? You know, cause I didn't know what I was doing. I, I literally just like I'm doing now. And that's why I told my wife, I was like, babe, I need to get like better equipment. You know, like if I'm like, if I'm really, really going to, I'm literally using my phone with a pair of headphones, um, you know, with a microphone in it. And, um, and it's people, I, I've had a couple of complaints and, and in fact, I have deleted episodes, but I've learned what to do with minimally what I have, because, you know, doing what I do, it's not like I make a, a shit ton of money. Right. You know, and, and I'm not going to invest a lot of money into this. Um, and I may now, but back to your point. Yeah. That's, I was like, okay, I, the whole, I, I'm not gonna be able to make it into music anymore. Uh, I'm, I'm too old, you know, I mean, I got gray hair, you know, gray beard, you know, gray starting to come into my beard. You know, I, I can't hide that anymore. You know, I, I, I can't look like that little, you know, 21 year old wearing the girl jeans and, you know, impressing the, the teenagers anymore, which is what a, you know, a label or what any type of, uh, you know, manager wants. And so here I am and I started my own management company. Uh, and and now I'm transitioning out of booking completely, and I just want to yeah. an artist development. And here I am, and it's I mean I'm more popular now. I, I actually started a new band, but it's nothing serious. And I and I told the guys because I actually handpicked these guys, which is the first time I've ever been able to do that. I told them I was like, you watch what happens with this. I was like we're gonna we're gonna get going, and it's gonna be 
it's going to be, we're going to have an option of what we could actually do this for a living, which I won't, I won't, but um, you know, cause here I am doing this. And, and to be honest, man, I, I, I enjoy helping other people more than just myself, you know, because I can, if I, if I can help out 10 people and, and, and not just one like myself, then to me, I'm leaving the scene a better place, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Absolutely. So long story short, rambling the fuck on, like I always do. Uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, I think age is huge when it comes to the entertainment business and, um, you know, I don't look super old, but I look old enough, you know? Um, yeah. and, and I feel sorry for women, you know, and, and I'll, and I'm gonna let you talk here. I want to say something I didn't have, I've yet to have a woman, uh, um, interview. Uh, and it wasn't by design or anything like that, but you know, it's funny because right now my next three interviews are all females. And, um, I noticed that a lot of podcasts don't, you know, there's very little, um, press and media, unless it's, you know, Haley uh, Williams from Paramore or something like that. There's no, there's no love for the under, you know, the underground or the ones that are coming up. And I don't understand why. Well, it's really interesting that you mentioned that because I had an experience recently with a, someone that approached us to book us and manage us. And, um, I got talking to them at a show and they were like, oh, it's really cool to see like all like, you know, there's heaps of women like coming up now in the industry. And I was like, well, we've always been here. So wh yes. why do you think you're just noticing now? And he's like, oh, well, you know, like they've been doing it long enough that they can actually like play their instruments. And I was like, oh my God, I like, that Oof. is just the most blanket, absurd Ugh. perspective that I've Ugh. ever heard. Needless to say, we didn't go with them. And this is like a well-known person in, in the Australian scene. And um, they were trying to make it a compliment. <laughs> and I was like, dude, like, you, so the only, you think the only reason why there hasn't been more women in music is because like before we weren't good. Like, and now all of a sudden, like I've been doing this for like 17 years now since I was 15 years old. Now, all of a sudden, like, we're good, right? And it's, like, interesting that you mentioned Paramore because I had a very, like, terrible disdain for that band for so long for no other reason than all my old bands used to get compared to them. And I hate pop punk. Like, I really don't like that genre. Oh, I would not compare you to that at all. <laughs> I know, right? So I had this band, like, called Vanity Riots for, like, six years and we, like, toured yeah. overseas and we did some, like, really cool stuff. But, like, we never – we hit this glass ceiling. And the reason I believe was, I mean, we had a lot to learn on the business side. Like, let's not pretend about that. Like, we could have uh, – I learned done... every day still. Yeah. Yeah, oh, absolutely. But like part of it is, um, and, and the feedback we're getting is like, people didn't know what to do with us because we sounded very similar to Avenged Sevenfold. Like that was what we sounded like. If I had to compare us to anything, like we're a hard rock metal band, um, that sung like melodic mostly in a time where the heavier you could be, the more renowned you were in the local scene here. So it was like, how low can you tune? How many breakdowns can you put in your songs? Like, yeah, it was just like that time. And um, the only women I had to look up to at that time were like people like Hayley Williams, who are great at what they do, but that I just never resonated I mean, with that. But yeah. Let, let's be honest. She's manufactured and bless her. She's a good singer and everything. And they were good like when they first started. But any like any band that gets signed, especially someone like them, you know, I mean, look at Avenged Sevenfold, look at um, look at Ask Alexandria, you know, it, uh, they're designed, you know, it's, it's yeah. like a manufacturer, manufactured, um, a product per se, which is what, how it goes anyways. Um, yeah. I look now, look now though, spirit box. I mean, in this moment, I mean, I could go on and on if I really wanted to, there's some of the top bands right now. Yeah. Absolutely. How, how does that make you feel? I mean, it's really cool. And um, what I would say to like anyone else who's worried about their age is like, um, I've had the pleasure of speaking to Courtney and having like conversations with her numerous times, like through my podcast and other interviews. And um, we had a singing lesson as well last year, which was really, really cool where we ended up chatting for like two hours afterwards. And she's the same age as me. And also, um, you know, uh, Ash, Ash Costello from New Year's Day. We've got Mixie from Stitched Up Heart, The Butcher Babies. You know, they're all in their mid to late 30s. And, you know, 
the, it's same in Australia as well. Like Drown This City, Alex from Drown This City is the same age as me. And all the women that are coming up in the music scene are all in their early 30s to, you know, and the um, bands that are slightly ahead of, say, where my band is at are all in their like mid to late 30s. Um, right. And the reason is because the music industry has been so, uh, there's been so many gatekeepers in the music industry since MySpace days, right? And MySpace was kind of the beginning of it all of taking your career into your own hands, but we still had record labels at that point who mm, right. were consciously or subconsciously um, not records. seeing, yeah, like not seeing like women as equal in the music scene or others or non-binary or members of the LGBT, like QIA plus community and whatnot. And like, there's a reason, like there are social, con- like, I hate talking about this in some ways because I'm like, I just want to it's talk just about true music, though. but it, it's just so important. But it's true. Like, and, I, and I think yeah. people that should listen to it, I, you know, I, 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 I won't lie to you. My crowd, my um demographic is 77% male. Oh, okay. Same, and same. Me, I'm a businessman, right? So like in my eyes, I'm thinking, okay, this, this, you know, I should go for females for multiple reasons. I, I'm a mama's boy. I got a daughter. I got, I live with three women. Right. And yeah. I've always been, I'm, a, I'm a nurturer, you know, I'm always the band dad, you know, like I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a nurturer. So it doesn't bother me, but I, uh, I, I, I lost my train of thought to be honest with you. I, well, yeah. Oh, sorry. You go. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go. Oh, no, I, I totally forgot what say. I was going to say. I was just going to say gender is so bullshit anyway, because I love the yeah. fact that you were just like, I'm a nurturer. So like that brings to mind my boyfriend who um, he's actually studying sexology, which like studies like gender and stuff like that. Um, so, and he, he's training to be like a, um, a psychotherapist that specializes in like sexual health and everything. So um, he is very much like his personality. He's very much a nurturer as well. He was raised by women, like a single mom and his grandma Whereas conversely, I was raised by also a single mum who was like very masculine. Like she had me out in the backyard, like hammering nails into wood. I I have a very, very masculine like personality. Like I will literally like make dick jokes with the boys. Like that's, I mean, and it's like cultural as well because I've been in bands with boys my whole life. But like, right. it, it's so funny because he, I would say that he's um, like, although he is like masculine. Like, he's more feminine he's, than you. Yeah, like he's so. I'm more feminine than my fiance, honestly. Yeah, yeah, and so it just makes me think like gender is just so like it's just it's not even. I I I understand why people say that gender is a construct, like because of those reasons. So I love, I yeah, I just love the fact that you mentioned that. Well, well, like the only there's only like I don't I I believe in the fact that you know girls can do anything, boys can do it. when, except for when it comes to, point to like in, like football right here American football I mean <laughs> let's be honest here and, unless you're like I mean because those those dudes are jacked I mean it's just natural that men are bigger than women you know that's just how it goes but and everything yeah. else like yes athletes and sports it, it, it's pretty tough you know and maybe tennis things like that and that's that's just a fact I'm not being misogynist or anything like that's just a fact but like when it comes to you know I used to have a fucking huge gripe over women vocalists I could not fucking stand them like screamers like I remember the only one I liked was Otep but who who oh, in this moment and I still don't like them I still can't stand her because she she gives to me and I don't care who hears this what she just gives off a wrong the wrong image to me like well you wrong, just don't vibe like if you don't vibe with like someone as an artist like that's fine but it's like it's, just, it's, it's not disgusting. really anything to do with the gender well no it right it, it has to do with her this is my problem with her it's the it's the hypocrisy right it's like the it's like the will treat me you know this and this and this happened to me in my lyrics but i'm i'm on stage doing this to myself or i'm you know it's like come on dude like okay so i i i don't i don't understand it i'm not a woman so i i back off you know and i, I don't it's my it's actually my wife's favorite band and i i i just you know and i don't dog them to her you know i'm just saying this on here i may have said it before i don't like it. But, you know, um, there was a band called uh, I Wrestled a Bear once. Oh, God, you know, and still to this day. But now, hear me out. There's bands like Spirit Box, You. Um, uh, oh God, is on, on the tip of my tongue. There were a couple in the back back in the day, too. What's that one band that they're huge? They're, like, huge. They're, like, the Ginger. She is a Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Arch, oh, yeah. Arch Enemy. Arch Enemy. Like, Arch Enemy. That girl can scream better. Because... I'm a very, very good screamer and I, I sing as well, but like my screaming, everybody was Jesus, you know, and she's, you know, so now like 
as I've grown and matured, you know, like I'm sitting there bumping your afterglow, you know, because first of all, it's different. Second of all, you're good. And I mean, I, do you scream in that or is that a backup screamer? Is that like a guitarist or something? No, that that's When me. you're rapping, that's you. Yeah, that's yeah, a, yeah. It's all me. It's so different. For anybody who's listening, check out the song Afterglow first before you listen to anything else. I promise you, it, it, it almost gives off this. When that happened, I'm like, oh my God, it's like an inner Shikari. Have you ever heard of them? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah wow. it, it, you, you remind me a lot. Like, it's like inner Shikari meets ah, shit because it has like a metalcore feel, but it's, I, I call it that because that's just a generalized term, but it, it's, it's not that. I can't describe it. It's very different. You're very, very different. Like, I'm the first, I won't lie to you. The first song I pulled up, I'm like, mm, I don't know. And then I listened to another one. I'm like, okay. And then I heard Afterglow. And I'm like, this is her latest stuff, too. Like, yeah, so, yeah. I, and, and again, that's no offense to you. It just shows your growth, you know, because that song is on my playlist now, you know. And um, I hope, I hope, I hope, and I, and I pray that that's the direction you're going because I enjoy that. But, you know, it almost has an Amir feel, too, you know, in that part, you know, because it's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, what's the line? Your man, your man's a con. What, what is that? What's that line right there? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's like, um, uh, have you seen my friend? She's an icon. Ha I've seen your friend. He's an ex con. <laughs> yes. Yes. And you can't hear your accent until like you start doing that. And, you, and it reminds me so much of Rue, even though he's English from inner Shikari. Cause you know how he does that a lot, especially in their older stuff, you know? Um, yeah. I will ask, the I will space days. <laughs> Oh my gosh, right? That was the very first band I found in 2004. I found the song um, Enterprise um, or Return to Energizer. I'm sorry, Return to Energizer. And I'll never forget it. It changed my life. Um, yeah, I, still to this day, I listen to them. I, in fact, I, I played with them here in the States. And I, it, yeah, my, I, have, I have episodes I deleted um, that I'm going to put back up that are about MySpace and how MySpace was the most revolutionary thing to ever happen to music. Ever, ever, ever. The mm -hmm. Beatles, everything. MySpace. You know what I mean? We wouldn't be here right now if it weren't for MySpace. Let's be honest. Oh, no. Yeah. Absolutely. All the connections, all the connections and stuff that, I, that were made, you were able to. And correct me if I'm wrong, and I'll let you talk. Do you think that that's what started to break down that sexual construct of women and men and stuff? Because women then were able to do it themselves. They didn't need a booking agent. They didn't need a label. You know, do you think that that was the start of it? MySpace? I if, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know if MySpace, like, was gender specific in that way, but, like, for I think for everyone, it really just put the power back in our own hands in terms of mm -hmm. music. And we all know, like, whoever was around, like, knows how instrumental MySpace was in breaking <sighs> bands. And it's like, it's, it's like, how bad do you want to work? Like, how, how can you hustle yeah. and use yeah. this platform and, like, add as many friends as possible to... That's how I was able to tour. To, yeah yeah and like um the bands that i was in at the time like weren't big enough to really utilize that platform um like we yeah like my space kind of started dying out like just when i got out of high school i think um yeah just when i was in music college and yeah and then by the time i got into a band that was like i could really do something facebook was already in place so but yeah like i definitely discovered a lot of bands through there and it was kind of this I remember being in high school and looking up all the local bands and like seeing what members were like were in the top eight and yeah just like checking out the songs and decking out your own profile and really using that as I do you know and that's where Monica Strutt comes from like that's not my real name speaking of um identities online <laughs> um so my Monica Strutt that was a fully like that was my that is my stage name and that was from the MySpace days and it's kind of like uh, this alternative persona that I created. I had one my, too. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think everyone did. Um, but like, it was kind of this alternative persona that I created and I have this like new course coming out called step into the spotlight. And it's about like really um, stepping up and being kind of a leader and like putting yourself out there. And one of the things that I put into the course was creating that, alter ego and asking yourself what would they do what would the most confident version of yourself do and I think that that's why I've held on to the name um aside from the fact now my business is registered under that name and it's kind of like gone too far that I can't go back <laughs> right um, yeah but it, it's well, I, I think like, that's better yeah. for a woman anyways I think honestly in this day and age it's better for a woman almost like and don't take it the wrong way at all please you know I, I, in fact there's this um 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 
lady that I run a page called the Ohio music scene. And a lot of people come there to find, uh, you know, help, whatever it may be. And th- she's coming up from Cincinnati to Cleveland, which is across state. And I hooked her up with a show. She's going to be on my podcast, hooked her up with my buddy's podcast. And I told her to be very, very careful up here, please. Because it's just, I mean, the world is a very, very scary place. And I don't know what it's like in Australia, but here in uh our urban like cities or not even urban cities. I mean, shit, even, even in smaller cities, a woman, cause she's pretty, let's be honest here coming here from, you know, somewhere else. She's a rapper too. So coming here and, and, and putting on a, a, um, a persona of, cause it's not, you know, she puts on a persona, you know, she has a stage, you know, presence, you know, uh, and I told her, just be very careful who you mess with. And I don't even mean it in a way she's going to get hurt or whatever. I just mean being taken advantage of because, you know, um, you know, a guy sees a pretty girl and, and then they're a promoter or whatever they may be, they're going to, you know, uh, they may, I mean, I've seen it happen. I've seen them being taken advantage of, hold on just a second. I got a cat knocking on a door. Um, and it, and it, it's, and maybe I'm being overprotective. Um, but after this last, uh, I was on a tour here recently. Um, and, and I, I, I predominantly just do hip hop now, uh, management wise and stuff like that. And we had an incident and I just, ever since then, I'm just, and that's my problem. I'm a, I'm a worry wart. You know what I mean? Like, it's funny. I'll tell my artists, like if they're going out or something like that, I'll be like, well, you know, make sure you're, uh, you know, home by this and, you know, protect your throat and don't be wearing your chains, uh, you know, to the club and, and things like that. Because I, I, <laughs> I truly, you know, I truly worry, you know, about the scene. And I don't know if you see my post, but I, I had strictly said that because I have a lot of hate. I have a lot of people that do not like me for whatever reason. Maybe it's because I'm very blunt and honest. I don't know. Um, I don't, you know, it's not that I talk shit about people because I don't and I won't. Back now, I run a business. I can't. That's on me. But the, uh, close to me that is literally ruined everything about me. And um, so I, that day I got in that day and I just wanted to make it clear. I don't respond to these stuff. Like, I made a post and I said, I want to make it very, very clear. I don't care who what to me or whatever matter. I'll, I'm here just. The scene comes first and then the artist comes second. You know, because this is my saying, and, and, and I'm not even going to go any more on this because it just angers me. I, my saying is, you know, it takes a village to raise a, a child, they say. Well, it takes a scene to raise a band, you know, an artist. And, and that's why I always say the mm-hmm. scene is more important than the artist. People are like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, if there's no scene, then there's no artist. And with this whole COVID thing, which actually I want to ask you about, you have a show September 4th, right? Ah, uh, that got canceled. Uh. That's what I was going to say. It, it, did it get canceled? See, here, I'll just say it this way because I don't want to offend anybody yet in, in the first episode, but we don't play that shit. And, and, I, and I have yet to stop. I've been booking. Um, a lot of the local places here, they just, they're, they're like, no. No, we're not shutting down, you know. Um, now, the bigger places that are ran by Live Nation, they don't have a choice. And it's ruined our scene. I mean, there's like nothing left, <laughs> essentially. And they're coming back now. And then now we're talking about shutting down again. So how does that, like, make you feel? Like, do you feel like it's just, do you feel like you're, it's ever going to come back? Well, yeah. It, I mean, it will come back next year now that our vaccine rollout is is happening. So it's all good. Like we have have that to look forward to. But ours yeah, has too, gonna... though. You know, like ours had too, and now there's a variant. And now they're doing a third shot, and it's like, oh, you know. Again, I won't get into it. But it's like, come on, okay, come on, guys. When is this gonna stop? You know. And I um, I actually have an episode about all this, and it's just, it's to a point where. You know, somebody made a really good point. They're like, okay, well, okay, so 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 it is bad at this time. Well, you're gonna live in your house the rest of your life if it, if it's they're acting like it's a bubonic plague, you know. And I just I'm a big, big, big uh, doubter of my government. I don't know how the Australian government is, you know, but I know that you know we're it's this is the worst. I'll say it right now, it's one of the worst countries in the world. And people laugh, look at me when I say that, and I'm like, no, seriously, it is. Come live here, and you'll find out. And uh, they control a lot of, you know, a lot of what happens. And that's ultimately like why I, I want to step out of booking now, because I, I just, I can't handle this, you know, uh, now you have some of the venues you have to have a vaccine to get into. Um, and it's just to a point where it's like, 
is this China or is this the United States? Which I have no problem with China. I just want to make it clear. You know, they say this is a free country and stuff. And it's gotten so bad that, I mean, there's hardly any bands left. There's a lot of rappers, but there's, I'm serious. I can't even name five bands off the top of my head within like a 50 mile radius. Yeah, I think the main difference about how Australia and America have handled things, because obviously we get world news and, um, you know, America is such a a huge influence on the Western world. So we're pretty in touch with what you guys are going through. And it's just devastating how many people have, like, how, how many people the government's allowed to um, contract COVID and how fast it spread. Um, so basically, I mean, our measures are pretty extreme. I'm not going to lie. It's been pretty hard to be locked down in our house. I mean, one person visited my local grocery store, uh, with COVID the other day and automatically we all got text messages. Anyone that had been there the same day, we had to quarantine, can't leave our house for any, any reason, no reason at all. If you need gross, but the thing is, we have support systems here. So if you need groceries, the government will deliver you groceries. Uh, We had compensation. um, The government gave employers, um, you know, $750 a week to keep their employees on, even if the business was closed. So we, we had the right support systems in place to be able to have the strictest lockdowns in the world. Now, as I said, it wasn't easy mental health. Um, has suffered a lot, but at the same time, our government that. also also subsidizes um, going to see a therapist and stuff. So they'll they'll give you half your money back if you go to therapy. We also have free therapy available. So the resources are there to support us, but it's right. still hard. And right. we look at Amer- America where the vaccine rolled out almost a year ago, and we go and we're like, our government fucked up and didn't get enough vaccines, and we're still locked down and still suffering in this pandemic. So that was the biggest thing. Well, they recalled one um, because it was giving people heart problems, heart attacks, people were dying. The Johnson & Johnson one. And I'm like, okay, I'll just say this because, again, I won't get into it. This is the first time in the history of the world that there's been more than one company making vaccines. There's three different companies now. This is also the first time you've had to get more than one shot for, you know, um, like a, like a, anything like this, like a vaccine or meningitis, a uh, flu, whatever. It's now up to three. Now they're talking three. And mm. I, our government, our government thrives on our, our pharma, our pharmacy, like pharmaceuticals. Like oh, everybody yeah. here is addicted to fucking something. Everybody, fucking everybody, yeah. like, a, a, including myself. Um, like I take Kratom, it's a natural, um, it's a natural, uh, It's a leaf. It's the vein of a leaf from it's Malaysia, that area. And it's, it's similar to opiate. I have long story short, I have spinal stenosis where my spine bends in on my, on my sciatic nerve and my legs go numb after being on them for about 10, 20 minutes. And I, and I, can't, I have to sit down. I, I can't. Oh, so it's leg. like a pain, a pain relief. Is that what it is? Yes, it is, but not anymore. It doesn't really relieve my pain anymore. However, it helps me sleep and keeps my mental health and gives me an appetite. Um, mm. and like my mother, for instance, she's going through chemo right now and she's on like seven different medications as well. And she has been anybody over the age of 50 in our country is on like an average of like five to six different medications. And I, I, yeah, like, and my back's getting worse and worse, but I refuse to, you know, uh, long story short, it runs in my family, bad backs. My brother got a surgery and they nicked his spine and he had to learn how to walk again. And I, I just, ever since then I got freaked out, you know, so I started looking at black market, you know, uh, um, back surgeries, you know, and, and I come to find out Germany's, you know, the most renowned and it's like $10,000 for back surgeries to stay everything. That's cheap because here, if you don't have insurance, that's going to be like $150,000 easy. Oh, and God. it's, cr- it, 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 it's insane. I'm serious. I called a nation on medication. Like it's the United States of addiction. Like it, it's insane. Our heroin and uh, meth. And I mean, it's their start. Okay. What Kratom came about because, um, it's getting people off heroin, which I never did heroin. I've done plenty of other drugs, which you can listen to other podcasts to find out. But um, it's getting a lot of people. I mean, record numbers. Well, they're starting to make it illegal in certain states. Uh, Indiana is one of them that I, I toured in, and, and they didn't have it, which is it's a Schedule A drug over in Malaysia and those places. Um, because I won't lie, it, does, it will fuck you up just like a pain pill if you don't take it the right way. And yes, I used to love doing that and all that. But when my daughter was born, all that stuff you know, flew out the window. I mean, for Christ's sakes, I just had my own wine released and, and I took a sip of it, you know, cause I don't drink and, but it's, it's bad. So I refuse to 
to partake in Western medicine. Um, you know, at, at this point, you know, I, I eat edibles, marijuana edibles. Uh, I, I don't, I try not to smoke pot that much cause it makes me paranoid. Um, but I have very, very bad mental health issues. Um, I got episodes of it. I do benefit shows for it. Um, I, you know, suffer, you know, multiple family members have killed themselves, uh, multiple friends. It's so it's crazy here. It, it really is. It, it's, um, it's wild. It really, like, if you go to a pharmacy, you're going to wait in line for like 10 minutes. It's insane. 10, 20 minutes because everybody's getting their medications. Everybody. It's like zombies, you know, like zombified. I don't, is it like that there? Um, like, I don't think it's quite as bad. And I say that with, with respect, of course. Um, oh yeah, I'm a dick. I'm an asshole. <laughs> no, no. Like, I mean, the way that the health system works here, because I know that one of the things I have, I have a lot of American colleagues and a lot of American clients and, and, and stuff. And I love, I love the States. I've always wanted to move to LA since I was a teenager and I've, I've been there twice now and I, I love, love, love it. Um, I, I did this amazing road trip actually in 2018 with my, my boyfriend where we, we, we went from um, San Francisco to Yosemite and down through California and. Oh, so you saw all the pretty Phoenix. stuff. And yeah. You did, I wanted, well, you, I wanted you to do the to East Coast next though? time. You, yeah. You like San Francisco? Look, I didn't. Um, and the only <laughs> I was going to say, don't lie. Don't lie. Uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, there were some parts which were nice, but for me, I didn't like San Francisco because um, I was very, I think it was probably culture shock. There was a lot of homeless people there. And oh. I know it's even like LA and everything like that, but we just don't have that here in Australia. Um, and I don't mean to sound like a, um, I'm, I'm not being like, oh, we don't have homeless people. Of course we've got homeless people, but like not in the abundance and drugged out and doing drugs right in front of you. And I wasn't staying in the, in the, um, in the, what's the area in San Fran, um, where you're not supposed to go. <laughs> You know, uh, like all, I don't know, there's um, all um tent cities, and then uh, there's Skid Rows. Um, yeah, that's yeah. every major we, city here. Every major yeah. city here has hundreds, if not thousands, of homeless. Every like, major did, city, even small cities. Yeah, and I was just very, very confronted. And I think, like, I'm, I'm sure if I lived there, I wouldn't be quite as confronted. Things are normalized, I, I suppose. Um, you know, I've traveled in a lot of- It breaks of my heart world. when I see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and I've done a lot of, because we're quite close to Asia. So I've been in most countries in Asia and I've got friends that live in Southeast Asia and more of the um, developing sort of areas. And right. so I, 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 it just, that's what it reminds me of. And so I didn't like San Francisco because it was just very, very confronting. And it was the first place that I visited and I, I didn't, no, I don't know if I felt in danger personally, but it was very, yeah, it was just very, very confronting. So yeah, I didn't like it. I loved LA though. And I, I know that there was, you know, the same problem in LA. However, oh, yeah. um, I, I do have, I don't know. I feel like I was maybe from LA in another life, um, <laughs> like from, from like West Hollywood or something like that, because immediately I, I was there for about a week and a half um, and then a couple of days on the back end of the latest trip. And I just felt like home. Like it was so weird just waking up and it, it reminds me of Sydney, like the weather and everything like that. And it was more suburban than I thought as well. And yeah, something about LA just like felt it's, like home to me. Well, because majority of like, probably like, especially where you are they're they're very, they're accepting, right? There's a huge, huge um, LGBTQ population out there. In fact, yeah. that's like, like San Francisco is is known as like the um for lack of a better term the capital that's what everybody says you know for again lack of a better term and and forgive me you know the artist I work with that you know correct me when I'm wrong after I, you listen to this um but it's and it's gotten so bad like the HIV and stuff and, and it's not addressed but over there it's very accepting California is the trend center of the entire world like you say you know we influence you no California does because California influences mm -hmm. us you know and that's where the skinny jeans came from and the colored hair and the, and the lip rings and the punk attitude and the, you know what I mean? Like it, it all came from there. Cause I was like the last settled place in America, you know, outside of Hawaii, which is an Island, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. And I, I think that has a lot to do with it. I think a lot of it has to do too. And, and which, why America is such a shithole is it's, there's just so many different cultures and religions and, and again, I love it all. I'm not, I have, I'm not, I have no problem with any of that. However, when, 
when there's no set, like when there's no, um, there's, there's favorites, right. You know, like there's favorite religions that the government have and there's favorite cultures the government have, you know, and I'm sure you've heard about, you know, the riots and stuff like that. You know, when, when George Floyd was murdered by a policeman and that mm -hmm. happens so much here, like black people are murdered at a rapid rate by police officers that you would think something would be done. And it, and it isn't. And, it, and, that's just like America as a whole. Now, when you get into bigger cities, even Cleveland, which is close to me, shout out Cleveland, it, they're very accepting because typically that's where a lot of people, um, the outcasts end up being because it's, it's accepting because there's so much, there's so much to do there. Like, you know, it, there's, it, America's such a metropolis and these cities that they're, you know, there's, there's, um, red light districts, there's casinos, there's, you know, uh, um, strip clubs, there's everything, everything you can imagine. So every city is, I mean, for the most part, I mean, you'll get, you'll find some down in Texas and stuff that aren't like that and, and whatnot, but America's, uh, it, <laughs> you know, uh, Mark Ribier, do you know who that is? No. Ribier, Mark Ribier. He's like the, one of the biggest artists in the world right now. You need to check him out. He just had that Lollapalooza actually. Um, he is a freestyle, like, musician where he'll go up and he'll just like loop stuff and you know play whatever and he said it best he said america's one big fucking fucked up giant experiment and that's what we are and that's exactly what we are i mean there are no other countries like us you know we, again back to the you know cultures and religions and they're like oh it's the melting pot and stuff you know and it is beautiful in a way however it doesn't like they don't get along you know like it's like christians don't like the muslims uh the, the muslims don't like the Christians. Christians don't like the Catholic. You know what I mean? And it, and it, and it goes deeper and deeper. And then it goes down into now it's changing with our generation because, you know, like I'm raising my, my baby girl, like, you know, that, that none of that matters, right? A person's a person. It doesn't, I don't care what they are. You know, as long as they're a, a good person, then they're a good person. It doesn't matter now. However, I was raised different and um, not so much by my mother, but my, my stepfather, he was extremely racist extremely racist and that's normal here you know so it's that's what you know it's funny I, I had a friend of mine from egypt in fact he was like man i want to come to america i was like no you don't dude i was like don't come here go to canada <laughs> you know because such a falsehood on this country and 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 i've had a disdain for it since i was probably like 13 years old to be honest with you live here yeah. live here for a few years and i'm telling you, you would see it like how bad they treat like it's it's bad it really like our prison industry like we have more people in prison than the rest of the country combined like in their prisons now tell me yeah you know wow. like it's just yeah it's just uh i'm gonna stop rambling about it but i'm letting you know like from 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 my standpoint that that's how i see america and that's how like 70 to 80 percent of the people i would have to say because we've grown up and actually seen it for what it is we at least 70 to 80 percent of the people that i'm around and associate with they think the same exact way I do because they see it, you know? So, but it is changing. It, it, however it is, you know, I say it takes one person to make a change and it's slowly, slowly changing, you know, um, which is nice, it, back, you know, back to the whole woman thing, you know, uh, it, it's bad here in America, but it's changing, you know, now women are, are CEOs and uh, mayors and, you know, we're, we're looking, you know, almost had a woman president and, you know, it, it's, it's, things are finally starting to change a little bit, you know, uh, because we, you know, whatever it is, maybe it was, uh, we were, we, we were, we have compassion. We were raised differently, uh, on different things, but like, I can't agree with how, you know, my stepfather thought at all because it's just wrong to me. And that's how a lot of people my age think, you know, so it's finally changing. Uh, yeah. It's God. really cool to see the younger generations. And do you know what? I've been educated so much by TikTok. Like, <laughs> Yes, I know, like, yes. obviously, like, the internet, you, you can't believe everything, but there are so many woke legends on TikTok <laughs> in the younger generations, legends. like, 10 years younger than us, who are, are campaigning and not afraid to speak their mind and everything. And it's, like, the bands that I coach, like, who are younger as well, are just incredibly inclusive um with gender and with like sexual orientation and yep. race and everything and, and like body type and just like just so many i don't know like i just think it's it is just getting better and better and that's well, because of the efforts that everyone has put in as hard as it has been it does have a ripple it does work it does have a ripple down effect uh, when you do campaign for equality 
right? Well, like even my band, it's funny. I posted last night, look for a bassist and um, person hit me up and I says to him, cause their profile picture was like an anime. And I says to him, not that I care, but out of curiosity, are you a girl or boy? You know, just out of curiosity, you know, and curiosity killed the cat. And um, they said they're non-binary. And um, I was like, okay, well, we practice this time. Y'all come on, try out, you know? And, and I didn't think twice about it, you know? And, and I think that, I don't understand what that is. I don't get it, I, but that's fine. I don't need to. It's not about me understanding it or getting it. And I'm learning and I'm educating myself more and more on it. It's about me accepting that even if I don't agree with something or whatever, that does not mean that, that, that I need to treat them any differently. You know, just cause, just cause this person voted for that person and that person voted for that person doesn't mean I need to treat them any differently than how I would treat anybody else. And that's a problem here in, in America, you know, like if uh, somebody votes for somebody, you know, it's it's off with their head, you know, and it's like me. I try to understand why they did, you know, and and I think it's becoming more of that because there's more conversations happening, you know. Um, yeah. And I like think this just one. Like respecting um, that everyone's allowed to have an opinion and that's just what democracy yes. is. So it's like it's like, yeah, we don't agree, but that's like it's fine. You know what I mean? Like it, it, that's just how it works. And you can waste a lot of your energy, like trying to convince someone to vote your way or to do things your way or to, you know, you know, to agree with you over a certain thing. But at the end of the day, like that's just wasted. We only have such a limited time here on earth. Like to me, it's just bizarre. Like now obviously campaigning for equality and, um, doing the things like through the BLM movement is very, very important. And we need to speak out about injustice. But in terms right. of... I wouldn't even like, call that political, though. Not to interrupt you. I wouldn't even well, call that no, political. no, human rights, obviously. Yeah. Like, obviously, yeah. If it's like a human rights issue that, yes, we need to be we need to be doing better and educating ourselves and, and trying to push other people. What if it's like trivial shit? Like, I see so many people on Facebook arguing about Spotify royalties and it's just like, dude. Oh, dude, I just, I just, I just, I just, I, well, did you liked my comment? Didn't oh you? my God. Yes. You did post that. Like, yeah, because you know I, I mean? it's, it's like, like okay, well then, then, then go, then go play on the sidewalk, motherfucker. Like you, you ungrateful. Well, I'm going to shut up because I'll get pissed because that shit really, I wish, I wish I would have had Spotify when I was like back in the MySpace days because MySpace was not Same. Spotify. <laughs> oh my god absolutely and the thing is and i feel like the people that were commenting on your po uh, on on that post were um pretty like uh, they would probably have the same mindset as us but like you know in australia there are so many you know boomer musicians in those facebook forums being like you know this is my spotify royalty check for like three cents or whatever and i'm like well that's because you aren't marketing your band you're treating it like a hobby um that's because you have no fans so if you have fans and you're marketing properly and you're using spotify to your advantage it's like you can get angry that the game exists yep. or you can use learn the rules and use them to your advantage because yep. i know plenty of people who are making thousands of dollars yep. through spotify and it's so easy it's it's we i mean we're not we're not a very big band and we're quite happy with our spotify payments yeah. Here, we'll give a free tip out to everybody. Guess what, guys? Just get your listeners up and guess what you can do? You can then go to guitar companies. You can go to shirt companies and say, hey, we have this many monthly listeners. Would you like to sponsor us? There, there, there's, a, there's a real simple tip for the people that want to complain about not making money. Okay, well, okay, not making money now. Now well, let's talk about listeners here, you know, and – even if you didn't get paid, I didn't I, listen. My band had over a million plays on MySpace. Over a million. We didn't get a fucking cent. Yeah, that's cent. right. Oh my gosh, I never even like, thought of that. <laughs> never saw a cent. No like I never. No one. Was no hell no. I was happy. I was pumped. I was pumped. Yeah. You know why? We let we lever records. That's how bands got signed. Like that's how the yeah. Devil Wears Prada. You know, like that's how you set yourself above was by setting plays. And and, and still to this day, when I try to get um you know, adver advertisements or, um, you know, sponsors for a certain, um, like, you know, company, they're like, well, what are your Spotify numbers like? Um, they don't, you know, or how many monthly listeners, or I'll throw that at them, you know, and it's just like with any social media platform, it's all about numbers, unfortunately. And it is what it is. Um, and, and unfortunately you can buy those numbers. Like even my podcast here, right. I don't do the whole Instagram, Twitter bullshit. You know, I have like eight, like 800 followers on Instagram that I, I just started it not too, too long, like six, seven, maybe eight months ago. Um, my, however, my plays on, I can average upwards of, of 1000, um, 
and plays easy. And that's without me like promoting the shit out of it. It also depends on the guest I have too. Um, and that for, you know, some guy that, you know, just has a phone and, and a pair of earbuds. I mean, you know, it's, it's mind blowing how selfish and how like ungrateful they are. Like, it's like, okay, take it off and go put it on reverb nation. You know, like see how many, uh, how many, yeah, see how many AR reps, yeah. yeah, see how many AR reps are in your inbox, you know. But I like, think people are getting more and more savvy with that stuff as well. It is very, I've come across a couple of bands recently, and I have a background in digital marketing, so it's probably mm -hmm. easier for me to spot. But I think most people can probably, are probably attuned to it as well. You know, there's bands that I've come across that have hundreds of thousands of plays on Spotify, but they have no one commenting on their social media. So either, I mean, it's it, clearly they're paying for ads to, you know, places that are cheap to advertise to, to get those numbers up and no one's converting to an actual <laughs> fan. Yeah. So it's yep. like, is that even I have working? to confess. Can you I'm confessing right really, now. Yeah. Right. No, for, from a booker standpoint and shit, that's exactly what it is to me. Like this one band had 10,000, uh, follow or likes on Facebook. I was like, okay. I was like, well, um, and they asked for X amount of dollars. So I says to them, they said, I said, okay, here's, here's what we're going to do. We'll just say they asked for $500. Right. Okay. Um, I sell my tickets typically at $5 a piece, unless it's a bigger band. I was like, all right, well, we're going to, we'll, we'll even go up to 10. If you bring me 50 people, that means you made 500. I'll give, I'll, I'll give you another 500. If not, you owe me 500. They're like, we're not doing that. And I was like, well, why not? You have 10,000 followers, you know? I'll confess though, last night I tested something and I spent 99 cents, literally, which I don't know would be like, oh, That's probably like, a, yeah, um, on to uh, get, um, to see if A, this worked and B, um, how effective it would be for YouTube to get um, a U YouTube plays. Um, I think I got, I think it was 345 YouTube plays or some shit. I'm yeah, 99 that's... cents or whatever. Well, just to see, you know, if it would work. Because I'm not going to lie to you. If, um, let's say there's something coming through town that I see that's big. And again, this is shitty and I shouldn't even say this. But that would be probably the only platform I would ever do something like that on. Um, is YouTube. I wouldn't want to, be, because YouTube is such a large and I'm not encouraging this behavior at all. However, sometimes you have to, like, it sucks, man, because nowadays it's such a number world, you know? And it's like, well, how do we get our numbers up organically that high if they're buying them? I and you can't, unfortunately, you just can't. I mean, it's so hard to keep up with that. Now, you'll last longer than that band, but that band, it might discourage, it's, I've seen it discourage so many artists that they, they quit. In fact, uh, shout out to Flowstorm if he listens to this, man. Um, we had a whole CD coming out, and since he wasn't getting the plays he thought he should be getting because he saw all these other people that were paying for their plays. He, he, he's, he's just done. And it's a shame, man. It's a super well, shame. You're allowed to do ads. Here's the thing. You're allowed to do advertising. That's not cheating. I mean, we've all, the music industry. Oh, you I have mean, to on Facebook too. You have yeah, to. Yeah. Our Facebook ads, I won't even go into it, but our Facebook ads is blocked at the moment because Facebook is a dick. Um, yeah. It is. <laughs> all anyway. it is. But um, so we actually, our campaign is like zero Facebook ads. So I think we did like pretty well if you go look at the stats for everything. But we used, um, we did like one Spotify ad. We did spend like $150, which is like 100 US um, on YouTube ads. And they, they, like the purpose of ads is to get, is to pique people's interest and get people in your yeah, target yeah, yeah. You're targeting. Yep. You're targeting your demographic. That's what I was about to say. It's not like you're yeah. sitting there getting a bunch of random names and stuff. You know, I've, I've called several people out that on Instagram, and, especially. And you would know that the only thing that people in the industry labels and bookers and everything, they only care about, okay, how many butts in seats yep. can you get to the show and how many records can you sell like physicals? Yep. So, yep. That's, that's really, that's the only tangible way to figure out how much the band is worth because it is a business and you are taking a percentage from the bands that you're booking. So if they bring no one to the show, then it's just a poor business decision on, you know, unfortunately for you. That's, yeah. Likewise. That's why I went into hip hop. Managers. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah why I went exactly. into hip hop because it's, they're all their agent. The bands around here just weren't pulling them. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but when my band quit around here, um, 
it kind of just fell apart. There was another band after us. They were kind of like our little protege. They were the high, they were in high school when we were, you know, peaking and their first C- CD almost sounds just like our CD, which is flattering. I love it. It's great. But uh, <laughs> letters to a liar. Shout out Tyler. Love you. Uh, they were coming up. Well, they have a whole album out right now. They got famous last words, uh, JT on it. It was produced by ice nine kills since this COVID shit happened. Um, I don't, it, they've have an album almost sitting there for two years. So what I'm getting at is like the scene here from bands is just it's it's non-existent. It, it really is, unless you're deathcore for some reason around here. Um, but that only goes so far. You know what I mean? You can only gain so many fans playing that style of music. You know, and and it's it's sad. It's it's heartbreaking. Somebody asked me, why don't you book bands anymore? And I was like, because man, I have a daughter. Like, you know, and it, I didn't choose hip hop. Trust me, hip hop chose me. You know, it's funny. My artist <laughs> flames, my flames, like I'm, my artist flames. Cause I, I am the dorkiest and, 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 and for lack of a better term, whitest white dude you'll ever meet. Right. I got my mustache twist up. I'm, I'm very proper and I'm not, I, I don't really use slang and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very generic. We'll say that. Right. <clears throat> and when it comes in the terms of, you know, size of sleeve and stuff, but you know what I mean? As far as like, especially out in personality, he looks at me, he's like, man, I'm going to bring the gangster out of you. That's what he said to me when he looked at me. And I, and I said to him, I was like, I don't know about that, dude. Well, it's kind of uh, becoming true um, because uh, that's, this is, this is it. This is my home. This is my home. I found my home and it's crazy. 15 years in the metal. Right. And nothing. Well, not, not, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? No, I, I no living, like not making a living. Not even like I would say a year into hip hop, and this is the best I've ever done in my entire life. You yeah. know, and it's it's crazy. Um, it's it, it, it's crazy. Well, you know, you know why? And, and I'll and and I'll shut up and, and and let you talk. Uh, I I want the extra mile. And bands, you should do this too. Um, whatever it may be, I got a camera, a, a Fuji film camera. And I started taking pictures and started taking live videos and start started making little live visuals. I would take the memory card, put it on my computer, email it to my phone, and I would do it on my phone on an app called UCut because there's no um, watermark. And a couple of people saw it and they were like, "Dude, can you do that for me?" And I'm like, "Yeah, of course." Well, then I, now now <laughs> I use you know um, I I I have an editor, but long story short. But doing that now just by filming you know these hip-hop because hip-hop's all about imagery so <clears throat> metal bands hear this if if just just go take some cameras to hip-hop shows i'm dead serious go make a video of the most popular person that, that's there for free you know, put it up you know like something cool and and i promise you'll be your inbox will be flooded instantly it's just like graphic art i learned how to do that myself too because there's money in that and that and that goes, we won't get into that. And you know that because you're, you're a coach. Like, you can't just rely on your music to make money. You have to have other hustles or like, you know, a, um, a clothing company or maybe you're in the stocks or something. You can't just rely on music unless you're like asking Alexandria, you know. It's just, it's, yeah. it's, it's too damn hard. Well, there's ways to do it. Like, you have to just leverage other skills. Like, for example, I'm a coach and there's right. that's what I mean yeah yeah that's what I mean or, yeah stuff like that so exactly it's like if people expecting to get a full-time income just from their royalties I mean you can from touring for sure oh yeah um, if but, you play out absolutely merchandise and yeah stuff for sure. but it, but it, it will take a lot of a couple of years to you can build that up to you pulling the right numbers that you're not just reinvesting so right and you're going to need something behind you you know because you got to get a yeah. trailer a van you got to print that merch you got to eat every day and it's that's you know I, I put all those numbers together and, I, and it really sucks and in here talking about it, it's kind of depressing like I realized all that I'm like dude I'm never gonna make it doing this like there's no <laughs> way like you know not unless I get like rich or something you know um and, and it's well that and I was a metal I was in metalcore right and and again back to longevity look at Devil Wears Prada they sound like 21 Pilots and that like those are my boys shout out Mike you know, Mike, they're, Haronica, they're a vocalist. Like, he almost stepped back and plays rhythm guitar. Now Jeremy DePoister comes up and sings now. And I get it. I get it. You know, because that's all they got. That's all those boys got. Well, now they start a podcast. Now Mike has his own coffee. You know, uh, things like that. But, you know, and, and I tell this all the time. I'm like, you, you're going to have to conform. I call it butt rock. Like, radio rock, I call it butt rock. you got to be a butt rock band. Like, see their, uh, you know, shine down. Something like that that's going to be radio friendly to masses. Not just one group of people. You know, it's very, very hard. Like Born of Osiris is a rarity. You don't see many Born of Osiris's, you know, uh, 
who's being, but that's because they're on a brilliant label too, uh, Sumerian Records. But I, I try to tell bands that all the time, do not expect to make a living out of this, you know? And, and correct me if I'm wrong, because you're a coach. I always tell them to don't tour during weekdays. Like, unless it is absolutely 100% worth it, just do little weekend runs, like a Friday, yeah. Saturday. Come back home until you build up that crowd. Like, stop doing this Monday, Tuesday, when we're on tour. Oh, oh, that's great. Will you be on tour next year? No, because you won't be a band. You know, and, and I made that mistake many of times, you know, playing for two people on a Tuesday night driving four hours away. You know, well, there's no, like, I mean, a lot of, Bands are still under the impression that the more you play, the more like success oh, I you'll hate have. It. I but hate no, it. you'll just end up wearing out and oversaturating your own market. So there's yep. like you got to separate your ego and pretending to be a rock star from actually having the business smarts to lead to having success with your business. Right, and that's why it's awesome. There's people like you and me. You're you're way more in depth and you're way more educated on it than I am. I'm more I'm more rough around the edges about it. Right, you know, I'm just like more street about it you know um that's okay you're, you're... I was, i'm a self-taught marketer i never went to school for marketing i went to school for music so um this is all self-taught i like just took jobs um it's... that were i was unqualified for and then just made sure yeah. that i used google university to find the skills it's fine right <laughs> you know well growing up my mother and father had a marketing company make marketing groups so it kind of oh, just cool. in my blood i guess yeah and my yeah, mother maybe. she has she has her own company she does bookkeeping and taxes so and my father was a psychologist so it, it was oh it, nice it, 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 right so all entrepreneurs right you know all people that worked on that worked for so i kind of learned that you know and i i break i'm very analytical and i break everything down you know um like i'm booking a tour right now a seven date tour literally just seven dates um all weekend dates except for one is uh wednesday the night before thanksgiving here in america that's the biggest bar night of the year way bigger than new year's and I'm, I'm breaking down the analytics i'm i'm, I'm seeing how many miles it's going to take okay if we have this many people if we get this many people to buy onto it etc cetera, etc cetera. back tomorrow i have a meeting with sony sony music they sponsored our last tour so like i'm doing all these things that are that, that literally took me all day up until now right now like i literally put it down to, to talk with you like that's the thing and the problem is a lot of bands don't have the money to hire them so what would you what would you suggest a band that doesn't have money to hire someone like you or whatever what would you suggest them do like well, watch yeah you? i mean this is like this is the gap in the market that i saw which is why i started my business so to give like your listeners some background i was a music journalist um and most recently the editor of maniacs which was Okay. which is a Warner, a Warner music publication. Um, so, which is obviously one of the biggest labels in the world. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. If not, yeah. But not it wasn't, music. it wasn't until I started my career as a journalist um, purely because I just wanted to wake up every day and work in the music industry. Finally have achieved that this year, which is rad. Um, it wasn't until I worked as a journalist that I really saw the business side of the industry. So I'm trying to be this bridge, but I'm also a musician and an artist through and through like, to me, the art is the most important thing. And and to most people in the industry, it is, I would say, um, despite what I thought. And I'm trying to be this bridge gap between the artist side and the industry side for especially heavy bands. That's like kind of my niche. So where I would start is this, there's a lot more free resources out there now than there was. I would start by listening to podcasts. Um, there's my podcast, which is the Being in a Band podcast. There's also um, the C Squared podcast. I am Northbound podcast, which I think your listeners would really like. There's a few... I can link these below too, which I'm going to put yeah. all your links and, and all that stuff, you know, in, in the description. And, and, yeah. and the podcast is available on every major platform. Just type it in from the Stash podcast. You'll find it everywhere. Yeah, but cool. Go ahead. And, go ahead. And another free resource, which I'll just like shamelessly plug is just because we're talking about Spotify. No, that's I've what got... we're doing. That's what you're here for. Plug away. <laughs> I've got a Spotify playlist cheat sheet, which is free. So you just download it at monicastrut.com slash Spotify. And that's going to teach you about all the playlists. And it's not about. I'm going to write that down. I need to learn that. I'm writing this down. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's not just about. <laughs> what a, what getting... an interviewer. What a, what a professional interviewer. You know? I can send it to hey, you. Hold on a stuff. second. I need I need, I need to. No, I, I don't claim to be a professional. I don't want to be, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> hold on. Hold on. I just enjoy I enjoy talking to different people. Like how else would I ever get a chance to talk to someone like you all the way in Australia, especially yeah. right now, like, during this. All right, hold on, here, hold on. I love my podcast for that as well. Okay. What is a Spotify? Yeah. What's the information? What um, is it? Mon MonicaStrut.com slash Spotify. Monica. 
Stats.com slash Spotify. And you don't, feel free to advertise in the Ohio music scene. Uh, you know, all I ask is that you just do it like once a day. You know, like feel free to, you know, because a lot of these artists, see, I have a history, right, where I fucked up in the past, shit like that, blah, blah, Long story short, not 98, not love me right but then there's those two percent that don't what i'm getting at is you know they need another um because a lot of people especially now that i'm in in the rap you know these bands need help because i'm done with them you know i just don't i i don't have the time you know i mean i i, I don't i just i just simply don't and it is what it is i'm sorry i hate to say that it's just it's just the truth i've had a couple bands reach out to, for me to manage them and I, and I said sorry guys it's just not worth it for me you know um the, the money just isn't there um yeah but Someone like you, you know, like someone like, like I'm going to use this right here. Yeah, I'll, I'll plug you myself, but feel free to, you know, um, do that because there's not any of that around here. You're making me, you're making me think though. You're really like. I want to thank McAlpine Meadery for sponsoring this episode of From the Stash Podcast, located at 10035 Johnsford Road, Beach City, Ohio, 44608, phone number 330-756-5019. Again, 330-756-5019. They take passion in brewing high-quality European-style artisan honey wine known as mead. It's available in 87 retail stores. It's also available in 36 different states to your front door. You can order online at www.mcalpinemead.com. Again, that's www.mcalpinemead.com. M E A D dot com. Hours of operation Wednesday, four to 10, Friday, four to 12, Saturday, 12 to 12, bands, Fridays and Saturday nights. Thanks again to McAlpine Meadery for sponsoring this episode of From the Stash Podcast. Now, on to the show, folks. If you haven't heard about Anchor, let me, let me give you a little uh, rundown. It's free, number one. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit right from your phone. And I'm not going to lie, that's exactly what I do. They also distribute your podcast to every major platform. And not only that, you can make money from your podcast. With uh, you, you don't have to have any listenership. Right when you start, you can make money. It's everything you need, literally, to make a podcast in one place. Download the Anchor app for free, or go to Anchor.fm to get started. Bulb, like light bulbs have gone off. Like holy shit! I well, could, like that's why I, I do, do consulting. <laughs> That's like, why I, I could do, do this. Yeah, 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 you could totally do it because um, as a consultant, obviously you get an upfront payment, but my, um, and, and like that's obviously a great business model and, you know, then I send the bands on their way and I, I'm not relying on commission or whatever. So what do I owe you? What do I owe you? Uh, <laughs> um, but like the thing is my, what why I'm so passionate about this is because I'm a musician and I want to teach a band to fish. That is my whole thing. I want to give you guys the skills to actually be self-managed so you're not giving away 10%. Yes, it's like a fee to like learn all the shit now, but like the stuff that I'm teaching is going to serve you for life. And and I was lucky enough to have a mentor and be on the other side of things when my old band was coming up and it completely changed my life. It completely, I, I had no idea about the modern music industry before I worked with them who happened to be a manager himself. And he just changed my whole band's trajectory. And so that's what I want to do for bands is I want to educate them because I have a three-year bachelor's degree in music and the music industry, but that taught me shit about, about how the music industry actually works. So it every, all of this is like from my own experience as a journalist and also as a digital marketer in my day job and also as a musician, you know, who's built up my bands to certain points and, you know, we're playing our first major festivals and stuff next year. So yeah. I mean, we were, we, I've been in it 17 years, you know, um, I say 18 cause it sounds better and it's almost 18 <laughs> here, here in September. It will be 18. I played my first show. Um, so like, I think it was like September. So I, I forget, but anyways, it's, you're right. And, and that's why I try to tell people too. someone like you, you you're, um, one in a million and, and I'm not shooting my horn. Someone like me is too, because typically if someone like you or I has been in this, this long, they're not going to be in it this long. Cause I can tell you what, right now I can't name another person that's been in it as long as me. I have in my scene, there isn't a single one left that I started with or was with. So the information, just, just the, just the uh, raw talking to someone like 
you or I, somebody who's been in, been in uh, veterans. I mean, we're considered, we got to be considered like, you know, the boomers of the industry in a way, <laughs> the grandparents per se. Um, it's, it's invaluable information. And um, I, I just really wish, you know what I found out about bands that I don't like at all. They're so, they're so anymore. And it wasn't like this when I was coming up competitive, like the, the amount of just snakiness, you know, the amount of like, you know, it used to be back in the day, it was like show for show and yeah, these are my bros. And now it's just like, everybody just wants to talk shit about everybody, you know, or at least that's how it is here. I don't know what it's like in Australia, but that's yeah, how it is here. It's pretty supportive here. I think just cause our scene is so small, like we're a large country. We're almost the size of America, but we only have 20 million people in the whole country or 25, 26 million people actually. Um, so yeah, our music scene's like pretty small, so it's pretty supportive to be honest, but also that could just be me and my like I can sometimes be naive. Mm, I to can that. believe that. I, I choose not to engage with with anyone that I don't get a good vibe from. And don't, those people don't, because the scene is so small, those people don't last long. So um, that's say, the thing. Say like, it louder. Say it louder for people. Yeah. That's what I try to explain to people. Like, don't waste your, and in that post I said that, I was like, you know, I do not waste my time. And I know I did in that sense on negative energy or toxicity. I just well, don't. It's the same as the modeling industry as well. It's like, because of the internet and because of social media, everyone can get their name out there. So yes, it is, it can be perceived as somewhat more competitive and that's why there's no room to be a rock star anymore because no one wants to work. There's, there's a million other bands that they could work with. They, that, yeah. who are nice, who would be grateful for the opportunity and who would just make it fun. Because as you, as we're saying, there isn't a lot of money in the music industry in the heavy scene, at least at first there can be, I truly believe that I'm trying to redefine like the, the starving artist mentality, to be honest, but because there isn't a lot of money, why the fuck would people do it if they're not having fun? So that means choosing people to work on alongside that they resonate with and that they vibe with and who's going to make their lives more enjo enjoyable because that's the only reason why we're doing it. So yeah, there's no reason to be a rock star. So I hope that, uh, <laughs> that well, yeah, that makes you're, sense. You're so right. And it's with, it almost, it's kind of the opposite in the hip hop scene because it's so convoluted and it's so polluted and there's so every everybody's a rapper you know like uh, everybody's brother and sister and grandma's a rapper here and because it's so easily accessible you go on youtube get a beat and you can rap well you know this is what i tell people that want to come i'm like if you want to be a rapper i don't have time for you but if you want to be a business i do because i start artist development i start from the, the ground up well i don't anymore now i now i now i'm really only messing with artists that are kind of kind of you know or have an idea but but i you know it's about imagery hip hop is so much about imagery and you know it's like it, it's like phases it's almost like a pokemon like evolving in a way cuz like you you start out as this um tough rough um you know, uh, tough guy. I, I don't want to use the other word. Uh, the, 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 oh, I'll say it. You know, the, the gangster mentality, you know, um, is glorified, right? At first. Then what happens is they slowly start to evolve, it, or if they don't evolve, but if they, as they slowly start to evolve, you start to see them get out of that. And then they start to become a little bit more of a, you know, a mainstream type of artist. And then it becomes almost full fledged mainstream, you know. Uh, if you're not, you know, manufactured like Drake and people like that. And I try to explain to these guys, I'm like, listen, name me, name me one top 50 billboard charting rap, uh, gangster rapper, you know, like, and, and they can't, they can't do it for me. And, and, it, and it's not me being mean or me being, uh, however, it's just, it's the way it is now. Like, that's just the way the industry works. Unfortunately here in America with hip hop. Well, not unfortunately, because I think it's a good thing that that's not glorified as much anymore, but you know, you got Post Malone, you got Drake, you have uh, Lil Nas X, you know, all the top rappers, they're not like that at all. They're, they're very, you know, radio friendly. They're, you know, different. And, and that's, you know, I'm finally getting through to one of my artists. I won't mention the name that dude, your singing is amazing. It's so good. Do it. Like st stop being afraid to do it. He's like, what should I do? Pop rap. I was like, both. You do both. Don't limit yourself. Do both. But it's so important to develop an image. And I mean, it is a metal too. But the thing with um, rap is, again, there's so many of them. You know, it's like, geez, Louise. I mean, I've <laughs> just this year from touring and stuff, I can guarantee you, and I'm not exaggerating, I've probably seen, worked with, and booked probably close to 500. 
just in what let's see we're in the eighth month i'm going in the ninth month this year oh, oh easily yeah because the tour was 15 days oh we had almost 20 artists on each show um yeah so i've worked okay we'll, we'll say 300 we'll say 300 and i'm sure it was more than that that i that have been in my inbox all oh, way more than that and it's crazy and it's just from like this area area right we're talking like 150 mile radius which i don't kilometers that's probably close to 200 and it's just mind mind numbing. So you have to separate yourself from them. And and, and what's funny is it's like they're all um rob like, not robots. What is it like when you're the same cookie cutter? Yeah. Like they all they all are like you know what I mean. It's like separate yourself from them. And and that's you know where I come from with the business. You know because they're like, well, I want to make a living out of this. And I'm like, well, then you need to separate yourself. You got to create a, a brand. You know, like you need a brand. You know, like. Uh, a bad example because he's so big but like kanye you know or, or, or like drake you know like you have to be a brand uh anymore and 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 rap you can't make it just on your music it's not it's not it is not going to happen it's just not it's just it's how it goes it's just how the cookie crumbles yeah that's such a different scene to <laughs> To the heavy it scene. is. Listen, I never did it. I know. Trust me, I'm learning it. I'm just now like I'm learning it and I'm seeing, you know, because I'm studying. Right. You know, I'm doing my due diligence. Right. You know, I'm studying mainstream. I can't stand mainstream, but I'm studying it. You know, I, I do love Post Malone. I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I like Post Malone a lot. Um, and I kind of have a little secret. Uh, God, I'm gonna get roasted for this. I kind of like some of six nine songs. I, I'm going to get shit for this but i, I kind of like some of his songs um i'm I, I think that's it mainstream but um there's you know it's i mean that's our number one genre like it's everything everything is hip-hop here like literally everything everywhere you go everybody that, it's hip-hop that's it like you know i'll tell you a quick story and i'm gonna shut the hell up and win this here shortly i'm gonna let you talk some more and we'll end it i had a woman <laughs> reach out to me i had a mother reach out to me in the Ohio music scene and say, hey, my 12-year-old son is looking, he's a drummer, he's looking for a band. And I says, ma'am, I'm sorry. And she said, like, none of his friends play instruments. Nobody, I was like, ma'am, I'm sorry. He's going to have to find, some, like, 20-year-olds because there is no teenagers playing instruments anymore. And it's just a sad fact. It's just the truth. It's just the oh truth here. God. That's just how it is. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not lying. You Literally, you can ask uh, anybody. You know, like, it's it's in, it's crazy it's changing and it's sad and i feel like i should do something about it it's just like i have a kid now and stuff and i cannot dedicate that much time into that however i did start a new band and um you know hopefully i can influence that way maybe i don't know I, it's not going to be anything serious you know i only want to play every once in a great while i'm doing it because i love music i love making and it's not even going to be heavy either it, it, it kind of is but it's not like i'm done screaming i'm, I'm over it you know um i want to sing you know, and hopefully that can inspire again, because a lot of people do, uh, I'm, I'm using big air quotes here, look up to me, um, or know who I am and think that I'm something I'm not, they think I'm like puff daddy or something and I'm not at all. And, and that goes back to imagery too. But so hopefully, and it's sad and it really is. And, and you can ask any, anybody. And if they say, if they say it, if they're lying, they're, they're straight up lying. Cause I cannot, I cannot tell you outside of like death metal when there's been a metal show, like, like, the last time there's been a metal coach metal core show around here i don't know I, I honestly couldn't tell you it's been a couple of years probably like in my like immediate area and there used to be one every week and tons of them and it's crazy and i think that comes with the digital society oceans Eight alaska wrote a song called Hancha about it where we're just stuck on our phones i mean i am you know so it's i mean it's instant gratification uh type of world and, and a guitar is hard to learn drums are hard to learn you know and so it's like how do we battle that here see where you guys are from I don't know. I know you got bands like D's Nuts who influences the hip hop scene, but do you have any hip hop scene there at all? Yeah, of course we do. Yeah, we do. I'm sorry for my I, ignorance. I just don't know. Like I've never done any research and I've never heard yeah, of that. I mean, I, it's, it's not as big as the States, but it's still like most of our, most of our like top 40 is in the hip hop or electronic or pop genres, probably like everywhere in the world, I would say, or maybe not Sweden. <laughs> um, but I don't know. But uh, yeah, we've got like um, our own like brand of Australian hip hop um, where people rap obviously in the Aussie accent and it's like, how Australian can you sound? And <laughs> Dude, I need to hear you. Need, you should suggest someone that you like. I, if you, I, if you like, I don't know if you like that type of music or someone you think that's good that, that I should check out. Um, 
I'll, I'll send you some names after. There's some really cool, yes. like, First Nations Australian rappers that are coming up as well, which is really cool. Um, and they're really getting the spotlight as well, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, I'll send you, I'll send you some links. Uh, cause yeah, it's definitely not my genre. So I'm going to have to hit up my boyfriend to be like, Hey, it's not mine either. Say? Trust me. But I, you know, it's funny. I mean, that's all my playlist is. I have a few metal songs. Like I got, I got your guys's. I have, um, Ocean's Eight Alaska and oh God, I don't even know. Treasures. Have you ever heard of Treasures? They're from like Russia. No, yep. no. You should check Actually, them out. They got a uh, saxophone. I do know one. You got to look up um, uh, the the one that comes to mind is JK forty seven and he's an indigenous like rapper. Yeah, he's really really good and he actually performs in um, like his um, like his his native um, Punk? like ceremonial paint as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, Ooh. yeah it's in. really You're a big time. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really cool. Um, so yeah, he's getting huge at the moment. Um, and well, well I write for an online well. magazine. I write for like an online. Um, well, it's it, it's more of an easy blog. Uh, I do like an artist of the week. Um, oh, cool. On there, or an artist on yeah. the rise is what I call it. So you know, it, it, there's no boundaries with that. But I um I want to wrap this up for the simple sheer fact we're at an hour and twenty minutes, and I have a habit of just going and going because i can do that and this is something i need to learn and i appreciate you dealing my um manicness and my 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 random uh bouts of uh bitching and shit because uh that was something i had a trouble with last season and i was getting better at towards the end and i knew i knew i was gonna fuck it up with this time but you see someone like you i i get excited when i talk to someone like you because there's i don't really talk to many people like you, you know um there's <laughs> again that's it's a rare breed you know, so it, it, it's exciting, you know, it, it is, it's, it's cool to be able to bounce, you know, ideas off somebody who uh, understands them and not only understands them is educated in them, you know, and um, which I'd like to talk to you more about, because I, I think there's a couple bands around here that uh, um, I might want to, uh, you know, uh, introduce you to, to help, but oh, uh, we're, uh, I'm trying to think here. Um, if there's anything else like important, I want to ask you, um, I, I don't think so. I know there there was one thing. It was about a band. I can't remember. Oh no, it wasn't Feeder to the Sharks. It's a different one. Ah oh, shit. It's an Australian band. They're um they 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 came back out not not too too long ago and then they stopped again. And I can't remember their name for the life of me. And this is really gonna bug me because I wanted to ask if you like knew them or whatever. Oh man, I can't remember. I really can't. It's not Feeder to the Sharks. It's it's like that though. It's a band like that, but I don't know, man. That's, that's my brain running off two brain cells. Um, <laughs> with this ending though, um, is there anything final you want to say? I will link, um, all your, anything you want down in the, um, you know, description. Just let me know. This will come out my time 5 PM. So that'll be your time. 5 a.m. Wait, no, wait, what time is it there now? It's, it is not, it's 10 a.m. almost. Okay, so it's 10 a.m. and it's 8 p.m. here. So two hours and it'd be, so, five. so it'd be 7 a, yeah, it'd be 7 a.m. It'll come out your time 7 a.m. tomorrow. Yeah, cool. Um, um, but if there's anything, last thing uh, you want to say, uh, go for it. Yeah, well, I'm currently accepting applications to work with both bands and music industry professionals who want to grow their business. So I have different packages. Um, as I said, I mainly work with um, like bands or solo artists in the alternative genres. So that's like rock, metal, um, pop punk, indie, like anything, anything sort of like that kind of related not so much hip-hop or electronic or pop because the journey looks slightly different um so yeah i am accepting applications for bands to work with at the moment and also i've recently gone into business coaching because in april i took my business full-time after i used 2020 to grow it to where i was getting paid more for my business than my day job so um i'm really really well, proud congratulations. of that stuff. thank you i've been working really really hard for the past um two decades years. almost I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, I, it, the, and I'm so against like 
capitalism and the 40 hour work week. And there's nothing oh, more fulfilling for a creative than just being able to wake up every day and create and have conversations with people on the other side of the world, such as today with yourself. It really brings me so much joy. And as we're talking about over messenger before we started, there's, I don't wake up early for anything else aside from to chat, <laughs> to chat on like podcasts. Awesome. Or like, yeah, see, um, I'm, I'm up anyway. I'm up early because of my uh, child, but I didn't used to be. That's all yeah. I, I was like, I felt bad. I'm like, oh man, we could have done it later. You could have said, no, that's too early. No, oh, absolutely. It's it's totally fine because now I'll have a productive day now that I've gotten up early. I've been sleeping in too much. But yeah, I work with a lot of um, a lot of bands from the States um, as well. So um, yeah, I, w- I would love to hear from you if you're interested in that. Obviously, yeah, our meetings will be your evenings or afternoons and my mornings um so yeah if you're in a business or looking to get into the music industry and if you want to create a life where you wake up and create every day as well maybe to support your band or your music endeavors or just because you love it then yeah hit me up i'm doing business coaching too well um i'm not gonna lie i i'm considering myself um you know just be you know first and foremost and i'm not gonna make this long there's something that I've learned about myself, like whether, and I've never been a Mr. Know-it-all, but you can always learn more from other people, you know, especially yeah. someone that's educated like you. So I appreciate you, you know, just coming on here and talking and, and I, I did learn a lot and um, I'm going to check you out further, like the Spotify list. And I really do awesome. appreciate your time I'm- and uh, hopefully we can do this again. Um, and like I said, I'm going to put all of Monica's links in the description. You can check her out. I'll also have her band, Last Martyr, down there. And um, thank you guys for listening to From the Sass Podcast. I'm James Davis McAllister, and I'm out. Thank you.